Details aren't important. Listen, Joel. Hey, Julie. Hey, Joel. How are you? Well, you know. Are you really about to risk your life over a cheeseburger and fries? Play a fish, Ashley. I think my money's on the other car now. Well, that's just not fair. Like you said, he has a cowboy hat. He has to know what he's doing. Nice to know my friends believe. Good luck, Joel. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Hi, I'm Kate Krieger Watkins here with Mason County Press's The Scoop, brought to you by Safe Harbor Credit Union and Benton Baker Ford. And today I'm joined with Dawson C. Graves, local filmmaker. Yeah. And high school senior at Langton High School. Yep, that's How right. are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Thanks yeah. for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. So this is pretty exciting. You produced a film called Julie. Mm -hmm. So give us a little background about the film and, you know, what made you decide to go the route of like the summer summer of love romance idea um well coming off my last film i it, it took a little bit more of a dramatic tone i'd say and i and i thought it'd be i i not i can't say i really enjoyed going that route when it comes to it i just didn't like the i didn't like the whole tone of it so i knew i wanted to go for something you know fun okay. and, and, and summary and i knew summer was coming up and it was kind of a last minute decision to to shoot a film that summer because we had just come off one. We were starting pre-production for this film while we were still filming the last one. Okay. And um, I knew I wanted something fun and, and light and, and nice and warm. So, um, you know, how can you get more fun than, you know, a love story? Sure. So, so that's what we went with. So give me a little bit of your background. When did you decide that you were really interested in film and filmmaking and that kind of thing? Um, I don't know. I, in the past few years, I started off, you know, making some videos of, of like my dog with my phone and everything, you know, just how it starts. And I realized it was actually a lot of fun having this final product that you finished with, oh, and, sure. and and you know that 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 was yours and that you worked on. And slowly, the projects became more and you know more and more involved, bigger with more people, uh, you know, over the past few years. And I can't say I knew really knew when exactly I knew I wanted to do it for a living, but I knew right from the start, you know, a few years back that this was something I was extremely interested in. And I, I can't say where it crossed over into knowing sure. for sure, but at, definitely at some point along the way, I was, this is what I want to do. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have, you don't have that many years under your belt anyway to, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been making films for, I'd say probably around, right around four years now okay. or so. And how old are you now? I'm 17. Right. So yeah. again, yeah. you're a baby. Yeah. So what other films have you done? Um, I did a Vitra's Box, which was the which was back the, the dramatic one before this, and, and I still enjoyed making that. Um, What's that one about? Oh, that one's just kind of like a mystery with uh, you know a little some a little few sci-fi elements kind of okay. thing that uh, you know um, that takes place about you know about kids in high school and okay. it takes place in high school and everything. And um, and then before that, I made this series called the Zoe Videos, which were videos you know of, of my dog and a story that she went through and everything. Um, and those would I'd I'd say that those were my major projects. The Vitrus Box definitely being the first one that was you know pulling out all the stops for it, and then of course Julie even topped that by far. So okay, we're gonna go back to Julie now. Okay. Walk me through the process. How long did it take for um, filming? You know, all stages of, of, or filming well, like, or the, the whole like filming element from like start to finish. Did it take a couple of weeks to put it together? Did it take a couple of months to put it together? It's so purely filming and, and not pre-production mm -hmm. or anything. We started on June, th uh, July third okay. of, of this past summer of 2019, and by the time we had finished, it was November third. Uh, and obviously, it's a summer film, so it was kind of tough. We there were definitely times where we tried to convince the audience that it was summertime when it really wasn't. Okay. And because um, we were starting to run out of time and, and everything. So um, I'd say filming took that a good chunk of time. We were filming probably three or four nights a week. I'd say we were at least 60 filming days. Okay. Or so. And how much time did it take for you to do the post 
production. Yeah. Okay, so editing, um, you know, as I go along the project, I've learned in the past that it's easier to write when you get home from a scene to try to at least put it together. You right. might remember little imperfections from the shoot itself. <laughs> right, then going yeah. back in like two weeks and being like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, with Adventure's Box, I waited until the end to edit it, and then I was looking at footage, you know, from four months ago, so I didn't remember little things right. in it. Or if you want to redo it, you yeah. have a lot more time if you look at it immediately and say, Ooh, yeah. you guys, we need to come exactly. back and do this. So I was doing little things. I'd come home and I'd get a rough cut of the scene. Okay. Um, by the time we got to the end, there I was I was missing days of school. I was I was doing this and that. I was staying up extremely late for. I didn't sleep much for a few weeks there, but I'd say probably around. You know, we wrapped filming completely on November third, and it released the fifteenth. Which was a little scary to be that close. Yeah. So, um, I, when it can, when it comes to pure pre uh, post production, which is you know might be overdubbing lines or recording external sounds uh, that will go into the film for folly and everything like that, or or just just the general cutting of the film together, editing and the music editing. I'd say for that November third to November fifteenth, that's you know pretty much all I was doing wow. for the most part. So, I mean, if that kind of short period of time, if that kind of puts weeks. it into perspective, I was exporting the final cut of the film two hours before the premiere started. So, oh. and what programs you know, did you use to edit? What what, um, what do you like to use? I like to use Premiere Pro. Okay, um, that's pretty much the only one I have uh, a good knowledge of. Okay. I, I know of some others, but that's the one I've been primarily working most on. Most comfortable with. Yeah. Cool. So, how did you get all the characters? Friends? Yeah, so the actors who played it, um, Della, which was Julie, she played in A Vitra's Box as well, and I've known her for, for a few years now. And um, she's, I, I grew to know her as an extremely natural person on screen. So I, I carried that idea over from A Vitra's Box, and I thought that she would fit the role of Julie really well. I tried to find someone to play Mark that wasn't myself, but it ended up being myself because... Um, well, number one, I couldn't really find someone that I liked enough. And number two, things like getting the car to drive and everything and the clothes would be much easier if it were in the hands of me compared to us, someone else. So, you know, all the faith is on me to do some of this stuff. So it was it was just an easier all-around bet. And plus, I, I loved being in it. So, right. Yeah. How many actors did you have roughly? Um, so the main cast was just three actors. Right. So the three people with actual dialogue and, and story presence. In the film, there was Torrance Saxton, Della Sheets, and myself. And we played Mark, Joel, and Julie. And then when it comes to the extras, we probably had around 20 extras or okay. so, which were just other various friends that I've known and worked with in the past. I saw Sage on there. Yep. I know Sage. So. Yep, yep, Sage was on there. She was the drag race. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was kind of cool to like watch because it's filmed in Mason County. Mm -hmm. So to see all the different shots that you did, I was like, oh, that's Julie Ray's house. Oh, mm -hmm. that's Mike Linich's house. And it was yep. cool because you, you took the extra time to like scout out like places and pieces of property that fit the era, yeah, that which was, I was really impressed with. Yeah, that was definitely a big thing. Um, I, I know with like the Lineage family and how how gracious they were to let us use everything in there. Um, I know I was I was knocking on their door probably I probably knocked on their door two or three times in consecutive days because I saw this house driving by and I knew we needed a house for Mark's you know house, and I was just set on having that location. So I ended up I was standing. Uh, at the hood of my car after school one day and I knocked and no one was home and I was writing a handwritten letter to them and I attached the, the newspaper article about us and I put it in their mailbox That's and funny. I ended up getting a call back and now we're, we're great friends with them. So. It probably helps too that Mike is a musician so you know yes, they're a little more into the arts and that kind yeah. of thing too but mm -hmm. yeah no it was really cool because I where did you find the clothing I mean where did you you had like the cars, the clothing, the sh the shoes, the even some of the kids with like their haircuts and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. did you just know somebody who had like extra 19, um, 50s, 60s, 70s wardrobes? Um, it, well, a lot of it was shopping, you know, online. I, I visited probably every antique shop within like a hundred mile radius. Okay. It seemed like around here. Um, uh, aside from that, a lot of it was just online shopping. There were months of just scanning online websites for, you know, like Etsy for, for all this clothing that we used. There were a few pieces of clothing that came from uh, uh, Torin's family, one of our actors, Joel. Okay. It came from his family, and her, his grandma actually had a basement just full of some of this stuff that she just kind of held on to. Oh. And, of course, you know, and then Torin's mom comes to me with a trunk load of these clothes, and I was just... 
I was blown away because that ended up being a lot of for Joel's wardrobe. That's fun. And then mine I primarily bought online. I found through sellers. They're actual vintage 70s mm -hmm. clothing. They were worn in the 70s. Um, and with our, like you mentioned, the hair and stuff, there was a lot of the times where hairstyles were changed for, for the film because obviously everyone had long hair. Mm -hmm. So all the main characters, you know, me and, me and Torin, and uh, you know Joel and Mark, we had to grow out our hair a bunch for the role, like way more than we normally do. And then, um, and then Della, who played Julie, had to um, had, had to dye her hair blonde and keep it blonde because she's not a blonde. No, well, no, no, she's actually naturally yeah, dark haired. She um, oh, she looks yeah. good as a blonde. Yeah, yeah, she, it worked out. Yeah, worked out. Um, so she had her hair dyed for the role, and I remember towards the end she didn't want to have her hair dyed anymore, but she had to keep it that way and. Yeah, um, that's a little more extreme. Yeah, going I, from dark to light, then light to dark. Yeah, so. that's definitely that's what she does though. She kind of does that. She's known right. for switching around and stuff. But um, and then uh, Sage, for example, she played you know the drag race girl. We uh, changed her hair to a middle part for the day because that was definitely more sure. of a thing back then. Um, you know, little things like that. The clothing, all online. The cars. I had to contact uh, yeah, a countless we're... number of people in the in the community for that. Like, where did they come from? So, um, there were times during filming where I have I might be an hour away from having to go to a shoot, and I see, I remember seeing a 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia drive by me on US 10, and I pulled right out, and when I was going to the shoot, and I followed him down US 10 until I waited for him to park, and I went and talked to him. So and you I, stalked people? Yeah, oh, no, fine. that's a little bit... <laughs> yeah, no, Stalker. but uh, during one of our shoots, there was a... There was a uh, Buddy Reed drove by actually, and, and he uh, he owns a, a '70s car. I can't remember which one it was. And uh, we ran to the side of the road and waved him down and asked him. I have an entire contact sheet of all these cars I've tracked down, oh, and yeah. along with along with Torin, the Saxton family has a bunch of cars that they all yeah, use cool. and everything. But a lot of it's just you know all these people with all these cars, you know, just getting them all together. I mean, they they have fun with it. I mean, they go to car shows and right. everything. This like things like the drag race scene and the, the shoots in the parking lots and stuff. Those were their own little car shows. They were all sitting off to the side watching. Oh, I'm and sure. Well, it's so cool, though, that you kind of brought the whole community together in different aspects of shooting the film. Because, mm -hmm. you know, this person lent me their car. This person gave me a box of clothes. This person was an extra, that kind of thing. This person lent me their house to use, you know. Yeah. I think it's really kind of a, a cool thing. And it shows that, you know, the community is really supportive of people following their dreams yeah. and doing that kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. So how can people find your films? Where can they view them? So my YouTube channel is just Dawson Seagraves. It's just my name. And on there, you should be able to find pretty much everything I made. There have been a few things that are not there because of copyright reasons. But um, like major things like Julie and my last film and a lot of the Zoe videos and everything, that's just all on uh, my YouTube channel, okay. which is Dawson Seagraves. And spell Seagraves for everybody. S-E-G-R-A-V-E-S. -E okay. Yeah. What's coming up? Are you working on anything right now? Yeah, so about a week after we got done with Julie, um, I was already starting to work on what's coming next summer. And um, yeah, I, all I can say is that there is something all right, in cool. the works, yeah, that we're, can, we're beginning to write. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me today. I really yeah. appreciate it. And I want people to go out and watch it. I saw it. I thought it was great. I was really impressed of the production. The, the music that you picked was really good and stuff because that's kind of my thing. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. The music plays a huge part in the story. Well, even especially in, general, in the beginning. Especially <laughs> in the beginning, yes. And then uh, just even the lyrics of a lot of the songs mm -hmm. play a part in the scenes themselves. And they're all time period accurate. I know one of the big ones, Beach Baby was, um, you know, that's the montage song when they're all happy, and that came out uh, in, in, I think it was January of 1974, and that was a song that was a hit during the summer of 1974. It's funny that you put that on there, because I used to babysit uh, Stephen and Ashley Moyers, this was a long time ago, and he, Stephen was obsessed with that song when he was little, and he would sing it, so when I heard it on there, then it was like stuck in my head for like a week. Yeah. So, it's, thanks. It's, thanks for that. Yeah, it's a great song. It is a great song. So, well, cool. Well, if you want to check out Dawson's stuff, go to his YouTube page, Dawson Seagraves. Just search for that in YouTube, and you can check out all of his stuff there. He has something something up his sleeve, it sounds like, that's going to be coming yeah, out. It'll next, be a while. Next, next summer, but that's not that... Yeah. It's almost Christmas, so, you know, come on. And for any other news, check out MasonCountyPress.com, and our weather is always brought to you by Smith & Eddy Insurance. And again, Dawson Seagraves, watch out for him, because I think he's going to be doing some big things in film coming up soon. Wait, I never got your name. I'm Julie.